Hey, welcome to Mrs. B's class. Today, we are going to be painting a rock inspired by our two stories we read earlier. Here are our materials we'll be using today. We have, of course, a nice sized smooth rock. We have a Sharpie pen to mark places, or you can use a pencil, works just as well from home. And we have a big brush and we have a little tiny brush as well. Other things we'll be needing today are going to be a glass of water that you can put your brushes in, as well as a paper towel, which I will have by my side here for my cleaning of my brushes as well as cleaning of my rock. And the most important piece of all, we will be using acrylic paint. I'm gonna start off with two colors. I have a mint and a yellow there. Uh, but before we get started, one thing we wanna keep in mind is rocks can be a little dusty as they do come from the outside. So with your paper towel that you'll also be using for your paint brushes, you're going to take that paper towel and wipe off your rock a little bit just to kind of dust them off and get some of that excess uh, chalk dust or dirt off of your rock. That way the acrylic paint really sticks. So we're gonna go ahead and wipe this guy off. He doesn't have to be squeaky clean. Um, I do not suggest we get the entire rock, rock soaking wet as it'll be hard for the paint to attach to the surface of the rock. Now, the reason we are using acrylic paint is because acrylic paint is permanent. So it tends to stick to the rock a little better. Um, after the rocks completely dry, we will go in and we will put a clear coat finish such as Mod Podge or anything else that can withstand the weather and being outside. If you just leave the acrylic paint on there, it runs a risk of chipping off. So let's go ahead and get started with our storybook. We had a lot of examples of rock fish. So what I'm gonna do here is with a pencil or pen, you can use this to kind of mark where your face is going to be. And I'm going to start on one side of the rock and kind of mark it off. If it's not perfect, it is absolutely fine. As we are not completely perfect on each side, I'm also going to draw the other side of my face here. And he's going to take just a little portion of my rock, see? Um, and I make a bit of a curved line just to give him a little more shape to that, to that face. And there's our face forward there. And I even drew the line at the bottom. Now. Now that I've marked where I'm going to put my face, I'm going to set the Sharpie pen aside and bring in my water. One thing I like to do before I get started painting is make sure I put my brushes in my water just kind of to refresh them and soften up the bristles, so the little hairs on the brush. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and dab my brush on the paper towel and I'm going to pick up some of this yellow paint. When we go to paint our rock, we wanna make sure that we have a nice thin layer to begin with. Um, yes, you'll be able to see some of our rock through the layer, but the best thing to do here is to make sure your paint is not caked on or thick. Otherwise, it'll be hard to add more paint on top later when it is dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the inside of my rock here. If you are doing at this, this from home or you're in a classroom, please be sure you are wearing an apron or an old t-shirt to keep your clothes protected. As acrylic paint does tend to stain clothes, uh, it doesn't stain your hands or your fingers permanently, but it will stain your clothes and anything that's cloth. So just make sure you either wear something that's old or you wear an apron over that, those beautiful clothes you have on today. All right, I have the top of my rock painted. Now, what I'm going to do, I might switch over to my mint color here on my plate. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cup and I'm going to swoosh my brush in there. Make sure it's nice and cleaned off. 
You don't have to be super tough with your brush. And then what I like to do is I like to take my brush and kind of slowly scrape it at the top of my cup while holding it with one hand so that cup doesn't tip over. And then I dry it off on my paper towel to make sure it's nice and clean. Now I'm going to switch over to my mint color while I wait for my yellow to dry a little bit. So I'm gonna go over and I'm going to start painting this second color. And this is going to be the main color of my body. I'm not going to keep my fish just a teal body. I'm going to do um, some fins and maybe some designs on my fish. I wanna get pretty creative since I am, after all, an artist. So I want my fish to really reflect who I am. I also tend to be quite silly. So um, do we normally see fish that are this bright? I don't, but there are, I know, some out in the sea. Uh, they don't have to be all bright colors if you don't want yours to be that bright. And they don't have to be realistic patterns either. So we're not modeling these after real fish. We are just simply using our creative brains to create our very own little fish. All right, so this is getting a little tough to paint here. So I'm going to let my mint on the one side of my rock dry before I decide to go to the other side of my rock. So with that being said, it looks like the yellow is pretty dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to dry my paintbrush. Or I'm sorry, clean it and then dry it off on my paper towel. And I'm gonna go back and I'm going to add another layer of yellow on top. I want my fish to really have some solid colors. So I'm gonna go in and add another layer of yellow. And you might have to do this a few times with your painting as well to really make those colors pop. And if you get a little outside of your line, that is okay, not a big deal. Uh, let's see, our fish is trying to escape us from this camera view. Oh, see, my paint is already dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my fish and start painting my bottom part here. Making sure he's nice and bright. And then I'm going to clean my brush. I'm going to pick up my mint paint and now I'm going to paint the underside. I'm going to make sure again I'm not putting a whole bunch of paint on there. I'm just making sure that it covers up the rock so that later on I can go back and put another layer on. There you go making sure I get all those white spaces. Alrighty. Be very careful with your fingers as well. You don't wanna end up with a bunch of paint on your fingers and then accidentally touch your face. And now let's see, we have this side of our fish painted and the other side painted as well. So I'm going to go ahead and let that air dry for a minute. And when we come back in our next video, you'll notice that my fish is a lot brighter. I will have at least three coats of paint. So after this dries, I'm going to put, paint it again with the mint and the yellow. We'll give it a few more minutes to dry. Again, if you put that thin layer of paint on, it will dry quicker. Please do not put thick paint on there. Um, thick paint makes it a lot slower to dry and you may still need to add several layers to your painting if you make it too thick. Um, so please use those thin layers. Um, we're going to paint at least three layers on there to really make those colors pop. So stay tuned and I will be back to show you how to finish off our fish. See you later.